So the quote-unquote road I've been trying to uh, get to is this analogy between um, the, um, I guess in Heidegger's term, the vague everyday understanding of what um, own is um, in the sense of uh, family or country uh, in analogy with um, uh, what own would be uh, for Dasein as uh, the factizitat that we're um, thrown into. Um, you can see that in the case of the Nietzsche example, that Nietzsche is um, facing up to the what he's confronted with uh, based on um, what's there and what he's in the midst of, and that uh, must limit his freedom correspondingly. Um, a specific analogy would then be um, the country, um, say, um, uh, Germany, let's say Germany, and the regime, say the Weimar regime with its um, great effusion of um, avant-garde uh, creativity and um, uh, different forms of architecture and Art Nouveau and um, uh, uh, the advanced um, forms of architecture and um, so on. Um, and many uh, advanced research uh, projects and everything. And the great, um, in fact, Leo Strauss uh, said that during the, the Weimar um, was de facto the greatest period of uh, freedom that human beings have ever experienced. Because um, if you take, if you just look at the constitutions or so, the Russian constitution sounds extremely. Um, uh, liberal, but if you look at what's actually happening on the ground, it's not. It's much more of a mixed, uh, a kind of mixed mafia and authoritarian regime, for instance. And the same thing in the, in America, you can see that there's certain ex legal standards that are on the books, but that's not how it goes de facto. So, um, but you think of it. But some people don't like that. So you think of this split between Germany and, in fact, during the Weimar as we've been uh, speaking of in the past, uh, many people really didn't want, they, they felt this as, you can kind of feel it as this kind of, uh, you know, the Weimar was founded deliberately um, in Weimar in order to uh, nod towards Goethe, who's sort of semi-cosmopolitan in his uh, thinking, like, um, uh, much, I mean, if you compare him to Bismarck or somebody, to the, the heart, the center, the core of the Prussian um, uh, way of life, let's say. Um, and in general, people, there's this feeling that people didn't want the, um, this, what they thought of as, uh, is like Nietzsche is telling us, the Germans are taking on all these French forms. And the Weimar Constitution seems like a French, um, something hoisted on the Germans. And so therefore you had this big conflict between the um, uh, regime and uh, country for the um, solidarity of the people as a whole and you can see out of this matrix we have um, these difficulties which may include in some way the Heidegger's thinking on this steadfast resolution uh, although Heidegger's was coming to maturity prior to um, I mean uh, 1914 he would have been um, already in his, um, when is he born, 80, 89, um, well, so, yeah, he's coming to really his maturity during that period, so there's some problems there, um, which if you read his letters with Jaspers and so on, you see he's coming to positions on political issues, um, such as the Walter Rathenau, um, issue, and Rathenau himself, as a I believe I mentioned before, said uh, nobody wanted this um, uh, regime. Um, so the analogy with the Dasein here must come into an understanding of this uh, question of the difference between the Geschichte, 
which from a very ancient date, this, this word has already meant ambiguously history or story, but in Heidegger, it takes on the meaning, which is also already there, of um, destiny. And um, I'm not sure what parts we we lost in the, when the um, audio went out in the other video, but uh, maybe I'm repeating this. But um, so Leo Strauss says history, when we take it without qualification, uh, we mean political history. And then we're thinking of uh, the great men and things like that. Um, um, in the current university, say in an undergraduate course, what they'll say is um, the ideal um, uh, chronicler, there's a so-called ideal chronicler, is just that somebody making lists, reporting is not a historian because a historian must, um, uh, is somebody who must really be doing what Heidegger's calling historiology, which is um, showing the context, which is putting things into context. That plays a role in Heidegger, too, in um, Heidegger's understanding of what the basic datum is, is that it has to be in some kind of con. Nothing has any... Um, when you're thinking of things in terms of what's happening now and what will happen in the future and how that the way things turn out alter our understanding of things. Um, this issue of King Priam coming to a foul end and therefore he didn't have a good life. Uh, what does it mean to have a good life? It matters what happens, not just at a isolated moment out of context, but you have to think of the whole context. This kind of understanding is coming into um, basic um, instruction in um, the universities, right? So this understanding of historiology um, has become more basic. But when we speak of the Geschichte here, um, so for instance, we have um, a specific passage. So Heidegger says in section 34 of the seminar on uh, Nietzsche's second essay under the head uh, Historiology and, and Worldview, uh, Weltanschauung, uh, which would mean sometimes it's a translated comprehensive worldview. Um, we usually say it idiomatically. We, everybody usually says just worldview. Um, when historiology is determined from a worldview and for, for the latter, this is itself historial, a historial moment of a specific kind. Um, when historiology... Um, the science, as it were, this um, this theory, as we were just talking about, is being taught even in the um, undergraduate courses and so on, in some form, is determined from the worldview, the Weltanschauung, the comprehensive worldview, which in this case Heidegger is thinking of liberalism in a large sense, and for the latter, this is itself a historial, that is, it has to do with the destiny, the Geschichte as destiny, moment of a specific kind. Um, so our way of thinking about history is being determined according to this old uh, liberalism view, which has to do with the rise, which is, in a gross sense, we can just say it uh, runs parallel to the Enlightenment thinking that we're um, becoming more clear and distinct in our thinking. We're sloughing off superstition and fear and dependency on the external environment and um, Um, history. So this is a part of what uh, Heidegger is getting at. And the basic meaning of um, positivism is that you can't um, 
add any doctrine to it. You just have uh, what you see and um, uh, Comte uh, still spoke of the sense of theory in, in the sense of somebody looking from a theater box seat at things. Um, theory more or less in the sense of the theorist. Somebody who's just got themselves out of the uh, higgledy piggledy and has a um, calm uh, has objectivity in the sense of disinterested um, subjectivity um, and this should be extended we should be able to extend this to history and then the um, the scientists or the um, uh, I forget how Nietzsche calls calls that still the um, um, but in any case the scientists would be the ones that would have some knowledge of all the major compartments of the um, of all the sciences from the ba from physics, chemistry, biology, um, psychology, and finally history, which would be the master science, and history in connection with um, uh, politics, which has now become uh, difficult to understand history in that way because we have oral histories, because we have such a great um, momentum towards having histories of. Um, non-important individuals as it were not people that weren't making history as it were and then the whole idea of the um uh, identity politics which um supposedly one can't get identity politics just from reading history because history is only about um it, historians are strictly speaking not concerned with um, ordinary individuals only with the history makers and with big battles and things of that sort so um what is history? Yeah, we have to have some understanding of how, so what is Geschichte? What is the destiny then in Heidegger's view? It must be, of course, dogmatically, we can say it's linked to the um, Dasein and to the Facticitat. Uh, um, we'll have to try to make more clear to ourselves how these um, distinctions are made and how the restraints of what's one own is, um, in play here uh, on this analogy with the uh, um, uh, contrast between families and the whole community between um, uh, the um, love of one's country and the current uh, regime and then the Nietzsche with what he's been born into uh, the difficulties before him on the other hand, uh, his uh, history, his um, solution to the to the difficulty um, in the uh, uh, conception of life. All right, let's uh, try to search it out further as we go along, and then try to show what Heidegger.